erythropoietin has been shown to increase the proliferation rate of cancer cells, increase cancer cell survivability, increase cancer metastasis in the lymph nodes, and suppress the immune system's ability to kill cancer. However, is this always the case? Additionally, how can these findings be reconciled with the fact that erythropoietin is essential for human life? Erythropoietin, which is abbreviated as EPO, is released from the kidneys when there is a need for more red blood cells. When the liver detects hypoxia in the blood, meaning oxygen levels in the blood are lower than normal, the liver then stimulates the kidneys to secrete EPO. The EPO then travels to the bone marrow to increase the production of red blood cells. Since red blood cells carry oxygen, this increases the amount of oxygen in the blood, which corrects for the hypoxia that the liver detected. In healthy individuals, hypoxia can arise due to aerobic exercise training or exposure to high-altitude environments. However, cancer patients often suffer from anemia. Anemia is a decrease in the oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood. To ensure adequate amounts of EPO are available to correct for the anemia, cancer patients suffering from anemia are often treated with injections of EPO. However, concerns over the use of EPO injections arose after some studies showed an increase in mortality rate among cancer patients receiving injections of EPO. Many cancer cells express the receptor for EPO on their cell membranes. When EPO binds the EPO receptor on cancer cells, it stimulates cell division, meaning cancer growth, and tissue protective effects such as blocking apoptosis, the programmed death of the cell. Additionally, some cancers become more invasive in lymph nodes and lymph vessels after being exposed to EPO. EPO was also shown to induce conversion of naive CD4 T cells into immunosuppressive T regulatory cells. Cancer patients often have abnormally high amounts of circulating T regulatory cells. EPO exposure to naive T cells can cause an increase in T regulatory cell numbers, exacerbating the problem of excessive T regulatory cells in cancer patients. This suppresses the immune system's ability to kill cancer. However, some studies did not confirm all of these findings. For example, while some studies showed increased mortality rate for cancer patients injected with EPO, some studies showed no increase in tumor invasiveness or death from cancer in these patients. Rather, the injected EPO was linked to death through cardiovascular complications such as thromboembolism and not from causing an increase in the growth or spread of cancer. Additionally, cancer cells grow so rapidly that sometimes they outgrow their blood vessels and exist in a hypoxic state. This increases the EPO receptor on the cell membranes of cancer cells. However, cancer cells in a hypoxic state are far away from blood vessels and it is believed injected EPO circulating in the blood may not reach these cancer cells. Instead, locally produced EPO from nearby cancer cells provide the EPO to hypoxic cancer cells through paracrine signaling. Cancer cells that are in a normoxic state often have little to no EPO receptor expression. However, there is another receptor that EPO can bind, which can be found on cancer cells and is known as the tissue protective receptor or TPR. When EPO binds TPR on cancer cells, it can block apoptosis and keep cancer cells alive. TPR has low affinity for EPO, and the amount of EPO that the human body produces in normal conditions, such as from exercise training or high-altitude exposure, is not an adequately high amount of EPO to bind TPR. Therefore, this risk of TPR on cancer cells being bound and inducing cell survival seems to only be a risk with injected EPO as the amount of EPO from injection is far higher than the amount the human body would normally produce. It is important to remember that anemia is a serious condition and must be treated for there to be adequate oxygen in the blood. Thus, whether or not injected EPO should be used to treating anemia is a question that can only be addressed by healthcare providers. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel for the latest video on the science of human physiology.